Wow. Far Cry 6 is like the 13th Far Cry game, which to me is a testament of Ubisoft's ability to count. What do you want from me? I want the numbers, Mason. That's all we've ever wanted. In Far Cry 6, you play as either Sexy Danny or equally as Sexy Danny, depending on your personal preference. The main villain for this game is a tyrannical dictator named Anton Castillo, who is hell-bent on curing cancer. A cure. A road to paradise. Which, wow. Good job, Ubisoft. You guys, you guys really nailed it this time. You guys created the perfect villain. I'm so proud on you. Go ahead and pat yourselves on the back. Job well done. This also made me wonder, am I the bad guy in this game? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no way, definitely not, right? Now, before we dive into the story, I want to let you know that there are massive spoilers ahead. And despite the fact that I think Far Cry 6 is a cancer of sorts, I still enjoyed the game. I really didn't hate it. But that's because I like Far Cry, and if you like Far Cry, you'll probably enjoy this game as well. Oh yeah, I'm also going to be saying Gorilla instead of Guria. Because cultural appropriation is bad, and frankly, I'm just too white to say Guria 40 times in a YouTube video. I don't know, that's how I feel, so I'm just not going to do it. Whatever, deal with it. Far Cry 6 takes place in the peaceful land of Yara, a tropical island paradise where swimming is not allowed because there's too many damn sharks in the water. Turn the amount of sharks in the water down. I can't even go swimming anymore. It's bullshit. But hey, at least they have free speech. Far Cry 6 has a very fresh take on the Far Cry open world format. The map contains three separate areas with different bosses, and after defeating these underlying bosses, you get to fight the final boss boss. Yeah, I'm just kidding. It's the same thing as Far Cry 5. Probably with less boogers, though. <sighs> It was a little upsetting seeing the map and realizing that this is going to be the same exact thing as the last game. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. The game begins with Danny trying to flee the country to go to Miami. I don't think Miami is much safer than Yara, but I mean it's her decision not mine so I don't really care what she does. But after a super crazy boat party, Danny washes up on the beach and the game finally begins. Now, my first impression of the game made me imagine that there's just like this developer at Ubisoft and they only have like three keys on their keyboard, just control C and V. And somehow 85% of the code for this game was written by that one guy just copying and pasting shit from the last game. The driving, the shooting, even the grappling hook just feels like it was ripped from Far Cry 5. So if you're wondering what the mechanics of the gameplay actually feel like, just go play Far Cry 5. It's the same thing. But luckily these mechanics work well, so I wasn't too upset that everything felt the same, but it still feels a little lazy to me. So after both of your friends die within the first 10 minutes of this game, you meet up with Clara. Clara is the leader of the guerrilla faction Libertad. And after a quick series of tutorial missions, the game leads you to the mainland, where once again, the game begins. Or ends, depending on if you want to get on the boat and go to America or not. Which, honestly, dude, just go to Miami. This place is fucking chaos. And honestly, all Danny would have to do is smuggle a couple of kilos of cocaine, and they would pretty much treat her like the governor of southern Florida. Floridians are crazy. Sorry if you're from Florida, but honestly, you know it's true. Everybody knows it's true. The coronavirus, the China virus? Yeah, that shit's fake. I'm from the swamps. I play with alligators. Now, if you decide to actually play the game that you spent money on, you'll need to overthrow five different underlings of Anton before you get a crack at him. The first one I killed was Jose Castillo. Jose is Anton's annoying little shit of a nephew. Run. He was like a high-ranking military officer, and apparently he was like super allergic to grenades. After weakening the military, the game shifts its focus to hindering Anton's propaganda machine. To do this, you have to take out Maria Marqueso, or as I like to call her, Anton's baby mama. Yeah, I know. Spicy, right? Picante. After killing her, we find out that she actually was Diego's mother. And weirdly enough, neither of them really seemed to care very much. This cutscene was kind of awkward. Your mother is dead. 
Now, to stop the further development of the cancer-curing wonder drug that is Viviro, again, the actual plot of this game is to stop them from curing cancer, you need to kill Dr. Reyes, the brainchild behind all of this. I'm just a scientist! And after a short mission of tripping balls on poison, he goes down with just one headshot. Moving further south, the next target is taking out his navy, and to do that, we have to kill Admiral Benitez. Benitez? I don't know, close enough. Benitez is a very thick woman with about as much personality as a jar of mayonnaise. This is not a war. I don't know, I didn't really care for this boss. She kind of seemed phoned in, her arc was short and her missions weren't too difficult. But yeah, for some reason, I just, I really didn't care about this one. It's not that she was a woman, okay? It's 2021, I'm not a misogynist, I'm a cool guy. But lastly, we have to defeat Sean McKay who is the financier of most of these operations. Libertards. McKay is a fat American businessman. Oh wait, no, scratch that. Uh, he's actually Canadian. We're like Americans, except we say sorry as we slide the knife in. Which is one of the biggest plot twists in this entire game for some reason. Yeah, he was the only boss that we didn't actually kill. Instead, he ended up buying his freedom at the last moment. After that, he just kind of dips out and goes back to Canada or whatever. But I mean, you could just shoot him after the cutscene like I did. Because, you know, fuck Canada, right? They suck. I'm just kidding, Canada. We're, we're friends. America and Canada, we're friends. Thank you for Justin Bieber, man. Really, really appreciate that one. Now, to take down these leaders, you enlist the help of local guerrilla factions. So you can eventually launch a full-scale terrorist invasion of the main city. Again, I don't think that we're the bad guys in this game. At least we're not supposed to be. The bad guys are the ones trying to cure cancer. Oh god damn it, what the hell's going on? The first faction we meet is headed by Carlos Montero, who is a typical paranoid badass type. I'm not asking you. And for some reason I felt like he was developing Alzheimer's. They never said that in the in the game, he just seemed a couple screws loose to me. Don't know why. But it doesn't matter because he suicided himself like right away. Yeah. Why not throw the bomb? Instead, he yeeted his son off the horse and killed himself. But at least his daughter's kind of a badass, and she pledges to fight with you after killing Jose. The group that helps you take down El Doctor and Maria is Talia, Paolo, and Bicho, who are some cool, happening millennials. Definitely not cringe at all. Not even, not even a little bit. Bruh. They're also trying to run away to America, but after a couple murders, they decide to stay. Because, you know, killing people is fun. To take down Admiral Benitez and McKay, we meet La Morale, which is a group of dropout college students turned bloodthirsty killers. But I mean, fuck school, right? Fuck school! Fuck all this bullshit! What the fuck? School's for losers. And lastly, we have El Tigre, an old man who no longer has testicles. <laughs> <laughs> I've been kicked in the cojones a thousand times. I haven't felt them since 72. He leads a group of elderly mountain people who were known as legends because they led a revolution back in 67, which obviously wasn't very successful. But they're old, so they get respect, whatever. But after a couple missions, El Tigre dies in a missile strike, which is bad because I'm pretty sure tigers are endangered animals and you shouldn't kill endangered animals. <laughs> Each territory works the same. Help out the important people there, kill Anton's friends, and then move on. And once they're all dead, it's time to kill Anton. Pretty much the same thing as Far Cry 5. Ah, I see you picked up some trash along the way. After getting all the good guys on your side, Clara, the leader of Libertad, ends up getting kidnapped and killed by Anton. Because of course she does, right? At least something exciting happens in the story for once. This leaves Libertad's leadership role wide open for Danny to take, who despite being able to get all these factions on her side, is not a very good leader at all. We're going to win. I promise. <laughs> Shit, you're really bad at this. Now after all this is done, it leads up to the final mission, which is a full scale attack on Esperanza, the main city of Yara. At the end, we get a cutscene where Anton kills both himself and his 13 year old son. Lies. Diego! No! Yeah, we don't even get to kill him. I don't know why they did this. 
I don't think this is a very satisfying ending at all because instead of killing him ourselves, we just kind of watch him kill himself. The story felt like it could have offered a whole lot more. There were only a couple oh shit moments and they were mild at best. Like Juan working with McKay so he could buy his freedom or when Diego shot Raul to save Danny. I haven't talked about Raul. He was like Anton's top lieutenant. I thought I would eventually have to kill him in like some high stakes boss fight, but nope, of course not. He dies in a cutscene, and these are the best plot twists, which makes the story predictable and overall forgettable. The reason I spent so much time talking about the characters in this game is because there's no missions that are really exciting or innovative enough to warrant their own discussion. It's just gorillas doing gorilla war shit. But thank God that Voss from Far Cry 3 got a cameo at the very end of the game. Otherwise, this whole story would have been a wash. <laughs> well, you know, some people are just sick in the mind, man. They're out of control. But for further reference, Ubisoft, the most exciting part of your story shouldn't be in the end credits. This isn't a Marvel film. Well done. Okay, but what does any of this have to do with cancer? I know I had mentioned earlier that the point of the game is to stop Anton from curing cancer, but oddly enough, I believe that cancer is a really good analogy for this game. I swear I'm not reaching that much, just hear me out. So to explain cancer really quick, basically cancer happens when one cell does a bad job of reproducing itself. And then from there, that bad cell continues to reproduce itself, eventually becoming a tumor. Now, when Ubisoft launched Far Cry 3, they were greeted with mass success. Hey Jason. And it's one of my favorite games of all time. And in the nine years since that game originally released, Ubisoft has pretty much tried to make that same game with slight changes. Did I ever tell you the definition of the word shit? They saw that the formula they used was good and desperately tried to recreate it over and over again, as a lot of video game series do. Now, Far Cry 4 and 5 were good, but they didn't quite hit like 3 did. And with each new addition into the series, it seems like Ubisoft is straying further and further from the magic that made 3 such a great game. After beating Far Cry 3, I felt like this series might end up becoming a tumor. And that's because the Far Cry formula has been iterated on so many times that it's now becoming a cancer to itself. Now I get that some of you may disagree, but in my opinion, they threw out a bunch of mechanics that made 3 feel special. In Far Cry 3, the protagonist, Jason, starts out as a California surfer bro, incapable of actual violence. But by the end of that game, Jason is a cold-blooded killer willing to murder anyone just because. I remember the first time I skinned an animal in Far Cry 3. Jason let out a sound of disgust. Uh, ew. He was not comfortable with cutting up an animal, as this isn't something he's ever had to do in his life. But after dozens of in-game hours, he would grunt like an animal while butchering creatures that he had killed. This shows the juxtaposition of where he's come from. California surfer bro turned cold-blooded serial killer. And we as the player get to take him on that journey into insanity. In Far Cry 6, that character development just isn't there. Danny starts out as ex-military, so her arc just isn't comparable to Jason's. I hate to say it, but she's boring and predictable. And a bit of an alcoholic. I don't know where I felt like I get a little drink around. Here do you, bud. Which people who drink are the fucking worst. <coughs> The changes to this game made Far Cry 6 feel more like Just Cuz 6 to me. Instead of making it about the story and the missions, they just tried to make everything bigger, with more explosions. But despite the vast scale of the game, everything comes off feeling a little shallow. Far Cry was an awesome series because it told the story of Prey becoming a predator. But in Far Cry 6, you start as the predator. And because of this, you don't really feel like Danny's doing anything against all odds. She didn't start as some naive tourist who's never held a gun before. She started as a soldier. I mean, just give her a gun and you're all set, right? No character development needed. Um... Now, outside of the story, I did have a few other issues with the game. First off, they added a ranking system. But the ranking wasn't as impactful as I could have hoped for. Your rank really doesn't matter because you're not allowed to choose any special perks or get health buffs because of it. So the only way she improves in combat is by upgrading her guns and wearing a plastic 
croc helmet. It's like the best helmet that you can get in that game and I gotta run around looking like this. I wanna look cool. I don't wanna wear some goofy crocodile helmet, but maybe Steve Irwin would like it, so whatever. Rest in peace, Steve Irwin. I still miss you, bro. Plus, leveling up was quicker than me in bed. That joke was about me being bad at sex. Ha ha ha, wow, that's so funny, Trip. Um. But alligators like water, right? Yes, of course they do. They're alligators. So why the fuck are they randomly wandering all over the map? For real, I'll be running through the woods, then bam, gator time. Why? This doesn't make any sense that you're here. Literally unplayable. Still thinking about you, Steve. But yeah, I don't know. The wildlife placement kind of pissed me off. One of the other focuses of this game was the gorilla motto. Always have the right tool for the right job. That's bullshit. There's only one tool for this whole game, and it's a single shot rifle. It's one of the first guns you receive, and you can beat the whole game with it. Every headshot is an instant kill, and as long as you're not fighting tanks or helicopters, it's honestly the only thing you'll need. Just throw a silencer on it, and you're pretty much a ghost, because all of Yaren's soldiers are legally deaf and blind. They literally have no self-awareness, which is weird because I figured since we're going up against a literal army in this game instead of a loosely organized band of pirates or cultists, that stealth would be receiving a big rework. Nope, it's the same old shit that it's always been. Just hide in a bush and fire away, you're fine. Now, this next one's probably my fault, but I only used one of the Supremo backpacks the entire game. The rest of the Supremos seemed lame, and I didn't even bother trying them out. I mean, why would I when I'm a walking missile silo that can one-tap tanks and helicopters at ease? Why would I trade that in for like an EMP or some bullshit to help my teammates out? Fuck my team. Those Libertad soldiers suck. They're idiots. I don't care if they live or die. I'm trying to launch missiles out of my ass. Way better. But yeah, overall, I still don't think Far Cry 6 is a bad game. But in my opinion, it's a step in the wrong direction. And right now, I think it might be the first cell in a tumor. Because instead of telling an interesting story of an average person becoming a serial killer, we get a story about a revolution that's stale and dry. If you like Far Cry and the Far Cry formula, you'll probably like this game. But I don't think this will be anybody's favorite Far Cry game. Because instead of going from prey to predator, you go from gorilla to gorilla. And of course, thanks for watching. Okay, GTA Remastered? The video's coming soon. I'll do my best to get it out when I can, but I have a full-time job, and I don't have a lot of time to do all this shit. Oh yeah, also follow me on things. Okay, bye. I'm leaving. Goodbye. I hope you like the video. If you don't, you can go f*** yourself. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Wow. What a great video. <laughs>